Students at McGill University spend three weeks on hunger strike for divestment from Israeli firms. Unfilled residency spots in Ontario have doctors concerned. Saskatchewan government says it's willing to fund RCMP to find new recruits. Death toll in Russia rises in attack ISIS claims responsibility for. Senegal finally heads to the polls in delayed presidential election and charges finally laid in the murder of Marielle Franco. And they include the former chief of police of Rio de Janeiro. Good morning. It's Monday, March 25th. I'm Nora. Here are your headlines. We start today in Montreal, where tensions are high at McGill University. A group of students have been on hunger strike for three weeks now, reports The Guardian. Their aim is to draw attention to the connection the university has to companies linked to the military in Israel and to demand that it divest from them. According to The Guardian, McGill invests in companies like Lockheed Martin and Safran, both of which have sold military equipment and arms to Israel. The students are calling on the university to divest around $20 million from these types of companies. One of the students, Rania Amin, has been participating in the strike for over 30 continuous days. Amin said that McGill had acknowledged the strike and proposed a public forum to discuss the issue, though they cancelled the event. The administration later suggested a private meeting with students, which they rejected. The students who spoke to The Guardian told the paper that they will carry on with their hunger strike until the university agrees to their demands. Separately, teaching assistants at the university voted to go on strike starting today. I'll bring you details of that story in tomorrow's update. It is important to note that as far as a Google search can show, this story has not been reported in any Canadian media. Moving on to Ontario, where doctors are expressing concern over unfilled residency spots. Data shows that more than 100 positions meant for medical school graduates who want to train in family medicine have remained vacant. That's out of 560 total spots available in Ontario this year. The number of unfilled spots has been increasing year over year since 2020. Finding a family doctor in Ontario has been a major issue. According to the Ontario College of Family Physicians, 2.3 million Ontarians currently don't have a family doctor, and that number could go up to over 4 million by 2026. A Canadian residency matching service spokesperson told CBC that the positions could still be filled because there's another round of matchings to go. However, this also comes as more and more medical students are not looking to enter family medicine as their first choice. At the crux of this is a labor issue. Family doctors are chronically overworked and underpaid. It's easy to see why medical students might not want to choose this path, especially if they're carrying hundreds of thousands of dollars in student debt. A union member representing family doctors told the CBC that the solution, as he sees it, is to increase family doctor wages so that the profession becomes more sustainable for practitioners and an attractive option for medical graduates. You know what also is an option? Eliminating tuition fees for everyone, doctors included. There's no reason why you have to demonstrate that you can pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go into the field. As we said 15 years ago, this is a system that only ensures that the sons and daughters of doctors and lawyers will go on to be doctors and lawyers. And there you go. That's where we are. We were right. Mm. Next up, CBC News is reporting that the Public Safety Ministry in Saskatchewan is working with the RCMP to provide funding for new recruitment beyond what was in the recent budget. The recent budget included $641 million from the Ministry of Corrections, Policing and Public Safety, with $228 million of that dedicated to the province's RCMP. The recent budget allocation increased by $4.3 million from last year. The extra recruitment funding will likely be similar to a demand that the RCMP union made back in January, asking for $100 million over five years to hire 300 regular members, as part of recommendations made and an inquest into the stabbings that took place at James Smith Cree Nation. The recommendations also included suggestions that the RCMP hire more for crime reduction, warrant enforcement, and trafficking response teams. The Public Safety Ministry said that the money would be made available to fund positions when they are filled, but not before that. The provincial government funds 70% of the RCMP there, while the federal government funds the other 30.
Turning now to Russia, where authorities say that 11 people have been arrested in an attack that left 137 people dead on Friday at a concert hall in Moscow's suburbs. Four of the 11 arrested were directly involved, according to Russian officials. Since Friday, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack, with U.S. intelligence saying that it confirmed that an affiliate of the terrorist group was involved, known as ISIS-K. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin has been laying the blame squarely on Ukraine, obviously. He suggested that there was an attempt from the Ukrainian side of the border to help the perpetrators escape. He provided no evidence to back up that allegation. Ukraine, for its part, obviously vehemently denies any suggestion of its involvement. U.S. officials also claim that they privately shared information suggesting an imminent terrorist attack by ISIS with their Russian counterparts earlier this month, but that the warnings had not gone heeded. This isn't the first time that ISIS has targeted Russia. In October 2015, the group downed a Russian passenger plane carrying 224 people over Sinai in Egypt. Everyone on board was killed. Putin declared Sunday a day of mourning for the victims of the attack, which included three children. Now to Senegal, where votes are being counted in the country's fifth presidential election. Seven million of the country's 17 million people registered to vote in the closely watched election. Early counting showed that opposition candidate Bessirou Diomaye Faye took the lead in the polls. The election was initially scheduled for earlier this year, several weeks ago, actually. However, it was delayed after allegations of corruption within the arm that approved the list of candidates. Senegal has faced several years of political unrest and protests that have garnered support for the opposition. The incumbent, Macky Sall, was not on the ballot a first time in the country's history. He stepped down after serving two terms, as that's the limit of how long someone can serve. Saul's persecution of opposition leaders and concerns that he wanted to extend his own mandate past the constitutional limit were the primary reasons for the recent unrest. The election also comes as the country faces economic challenges, including high unemployment rates. The final results of Sunday's voting are expected on Tuesday. If no candidate secures more than 50 percent of the vote, there will be a second round of voting. Finally, to Brazil, where federal police made several arrests in connection with the 2018 assassination of Rio de Janeiro Councilwoman Marielle Franco and her driver, Anderson Gomez. Police arrested the former chief of Rio de Janeiro civil police, Rivaldo Barbosa, Brazilian Congressman Chiquino Brazeo, and his brother, Rio State Auditor General Domingos Brazeo, for planning and ordering her assassination. The two brothers are alleged to have ordered the killing, while Barbosa, the former chief of police, is accused of planning the assassination and later sabotaging the investigation. In 2019, the two men who carried out the act were arrested. Both men were police officers. Ronnie Lessa, the person suspected of firing the gun that killed Franco, made a plea agreement with authorities and provided information on who ordered the assassination. Reuters reports that Franco had a disagreement with the brothers who ordered her killing. They had their eye on property that they wanted to use for commercial purposes, while she wanted it to be used for social housing. Marielle Franco was a member of the Socialism and Liberty Party, who, among other things, openly criticized police killings in Rio slums. Her assassination led to mass protests across Brazil. Those are your headlines for Monday, March 25th. I'm Nora. You're listening to this podcast at SandyNora.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and anywhere you get your podcasts. I hope you have a wonderful Monday and that you're staring down a short week four-day week if you get the stat holiday on Friday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.